Hey, what's up? It's JK with Elevated Recovery, and today we're going to talk about your schedule. Today, three of my clients woke up late and they weren't able to start their morning routines on time. And one of the bad habits that we build up when we're addicted to pornography is going to sleep late and waking up late. Now, this may not have anything to do with porn necessarily, and maybe you just have a, you know, you just have a habit of watching movies or TV series or playing video games late at night. Perhaps you justify it by saying things like, you know what, I have trouble sleeping when I try to go to bed early, you know, so I get in bed and I just can't sleep for like an hour or two. One of the things that I learned early in my recovery was the concept of managing my schedule. And if you learn this, your recovery will become a little bit easier. So here's the analogy. Think of yourself as being on a ship in the ocean, and that ocean is life. The different things which are out of your control daily are all the different storms in the ocean. So for a recovering porn addict, your morning routine is your anchor. It actually keeps you grounded during the storm so you don't get blown away by the storm and your schedule is your lifeline. So uh, what the lifeline is, is if you get thrown off the ship during a storm, which could be a particularly stressful day, that's the rope that is thrown to you to save your life and pull you back to the safety of the ship. Your morning routine is what you do every morning to prepare for your day. So it should involve a few things. It should involve a recovery exercise that helps you move forward in your porn addiction recovery. Uh, reading a chapter from a, an addiction recovery book, um, goal setting for the day, reviewing your boundaries, uh, reviewing your statement of purpose, which is the main reason why you want to quit porn, uh, meditation or feelings exercise if meditation is not your thing, something for your awareness. It could also involve different things like visualization, uh, gratitude, exercise, you know, lifting weight, calisthenics, yoga. It could also involve affirmations or self-talk. Personally, my morning routine involves all the things I just mentioned because it anchors me for the day. No matter how crazy my day gets, my ship, which is me, never sinks, which means I never slip or relapse because I'm prepared. And you can be too. With the morning routine, you will know exactly where you're going why you're doing certain things, where you want to be in a few years from now, and no one and nothing will throw you off track. Nothing will, will dissuade you from your goals. You'll become what I call emotionally strong, which means you're, you're capable of handling very strong emotions, which regular people would just collapse under. Unfortunately, you can't have a morning routine with a bad schedule. If you say that you go to bed anywhere between 11 p.m. and 2 a.m., you will never have a solid morning routine. Your ship will always be at the mercy of storms and you will sink and get damaged all the time and you'll often find yourself drowning. So again, I'll say it, your schedule is your lifeline. Decide on a specific time to go to bed and wake up. At that time, make sure that you are in bed, regardless of whether you have problems sleeping or not. See, in the early days of my recovery, by 10.30 p.m., I was preparing for bed. No TV screens, no devices close by, and I was in bed by 11 p.m. No calls, no emergencies, no homework, nothing. It was bedtime. Recovery was my priority. If it was a zombie apocalypse, I would have to find out in the morning. See, I was up by 6 a.m. and done with my morning routine, including working out that's going to the gym, by 8 a.m. every single day. Now, except for a few days, usually when I was traveling, this schedule did not change. I had a shorter version of the morning routine for days when I traveled and arrived at my destination late or the handful of occasions when I went out with friends to a bar or to a club. And then this version would last, the short version, lasted about 40 minutes or so. So many of us give excuses. During recovery, you either make excuses or you take action. Like you could give excuses like my shift at work changed so I can't wake up early. Um, I hear people say my girlfriend works late at night and we don't get to spend time together so I have to stay up late when she comes back. I'm studying for an exam. I have a paper due tomorrow. I was hungover. I was at a friend's party. Honestly, Guys, listen up. 
these are all excuses. We can't be perfect. But if you find yourself using these excuses multiple times a year, then you're slacking on your recovery. In conclusion, many men screw up their recovery simply because they have no discipline with their schedule. They do not respect time. Once you fix your lifeline and your anchor, you immediately cut down on the emotional incidents, the urges which you experience throughout the day. That's it. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please subscribe to our channel and share it with three men that you feel might find this helpful. And as always, if you ever need help from me, visit elevatedrecovery.org slash apply to get on a free 10 minute call with me. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle, and I wish you the best in your recovery from your porn addiction. Mm -hmm.